In this video, I'm going to talk about 6 SketchUp and V-Ray tips that everyone must know. They are technical tips that actually influence a lot of your artistic final result. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Oliver, and if you like architecture visualization and representation, make sure to subscribe for more content. So I was thinking the other day, what were the things that have completely changed the way I work with SketchUp and V-Ray? I decided then to create a 6 item list to share with you some golden tips that I wish I knew them earlier. You might know one or two, but I guarantee you won't know all of them. Alright, no more talking, let's go directly to the items, I hope you enjoy. The first one is something that literally changed the way I work with SketchUp. It's a shortcut that I set up every time I'm going to work in a new computer, and I assign it to the key U that has no other function. It works this way. When I'm modeling something that is inside or that I really need to see all the faces, instead of moving it out of the main model, the U key will hide everything else on the model so I can focus on only one thing at a time. It's for sure a game changer. Now to set up the shortcut, here's what you gotta do. Go to Window, Preferences, and Shortcuts. Then on Filter, type in Hide. It's this one right here. Hide rest of the model. Then insert the U key there and click on the plus sign. You can obviously use any other key, but for me the U is perfect. A quick example of how useful this is. Let's say that you want to work on some of these beams that hold the ceiling. Instead of moving it up to reach the beams, or even zooming in into the house, which kinda sucks because you have to keep scrolling your mouse wheel through walls and glass. No, don't do all of that. All you have to do is go inside the group and toggle the U key. Do what you gotta do and it's just that simple. Then once you're finished, as soon as you exit the group, it will show the rest of the model. Or simply hit U again. There are many more occasions that this shortcut will come in handy, but I think this hasn't simplified good enough, right? Now talking about this shortcut that is used in groups leads me to my second item in this list. Groups and components. Creating groups and components should be one of the first things you learn in SketchUp. I know that this might be common for most of you, but I see a lot of people still not using groups and components as part of their daily modeling habits. If I can be honest with you, not one single object should be out of a group. SketchUp is indeed an easy tool that allows us to create 3D environment in just a few push and pull steps. But if you don't organize your file and separate your model into multiple groups and components, you're pretty much screwed when you need to modify something. If I'm not mistaken, SketchUp doesn't come with a shortcut to create groups, and I highly recommend having one to do so. In the same place as we were before, you can assign the Ctrl G, which makes the most sense to create groups. I'm not gonna go into the basics and differences between groups and components and how they actually work. There are far too many in-depth videos out there teaching you the basics. But essentially, components should be used whenever you have an object that is going to have more than one instance of it. For example, this window used to have one component containing the window module. Then once duplicated, any changes are made simultaneously across your file. Oh, and every now and then, make sure to port your file to reduce the amount of unused things, being objects, components, layers and so on. Again, I know this might seem basic, but I felt I had to cover it because it really changes the workflow in SketchUp. If you really apply groups and components consistently to your model, you're gonna save so much time and have a much more organized workspace. Not to mention the use of layers and the Entity Info tab, but that's a whole nother story, I'm gonna keep it simple and recommend at least using groups and components very often. Well, this video is about SketchUp and V-Ray, right? This third item involves the two of them. It's an option that allows us to properly visualize the correct final render proportions. I'm talking about the save frame. If I'm not mistaken, this option exists from V-Ray 3 and up. It is located in your V-Ray Asset Editor under Settings. Then Render Output, and there you have it. Simply activate it and some black bar should appear in your SketchUp's view window. This save frame corresponds to the image aspect ratio you're using. A couple of years back, I would see people rendering strictly horizontal images due to the fact that it was hard to predict how the image was going to render without this save frame indicator. So that's why this is also on my list. An option that allows you to create renders in any aspect ratio and take advantage of those beautiful vertical proportions. 
All right, and just before we move on to the last three items, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. If you haven't heard about VPN services yet, let me introduce Surfshark to you. It's an app or web extension that lets you change your IP address to any place in the world so that you can access certain contents that might be restricted to your location. Surfshark also protects and encrypts all of your data. It acts like a barrier between you and the website you want to connect. Basically, you connect to Surfshark that then connects the website and makes sure that the web doesn't see any of your private stuff. I've used VPN in the past, especially when traveling, and I know that we are going through some uncertain times and we don't know when we'll be able to travel again, but VPNs are essential to when you're in public Wi-Fi. It protects you from data thieves who seek for your password, credit card information, and personal info. So with Surfshark, you can surf online with no worries. For me, the best part of Surfshark is that one subscription covers all of your devices and there's no limit of how much you can use it. Since Surfshark is sponsoring this video, they're giving a huge discount for those of you that use my link in the video description. If you get the one year plan, you will have 75% off, plus one extra month for free. And Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk at trying out yourself. Use the coupon code OGRAPHICS or go to surfshark.deals slash OGRAPHICS to get Surfshark. Thanks Surfshark for supporting the channel. Now let's go back to the video. Item number 4 is something that really opened a new approach to V-Ray that in the past I haven't had. You don't have to know every little settings here, but one thing that is really essential is to learn how to work with overall lighting and camera exposure. Let me first open up the interactive window render and I'll show you. If you have a bright morning render with interior light, sometimes the outside is too bright and you want to balance it out. Maybe make the sun less strong, but bring more overall lighting to your render. And there are two options that you can greatly deal with that. First, you use the exposure value. The smaller the number, the brighter your image will get. Little increments will make big changes here, so go a touch at a time. Then, your interior seems good, but the outside is overexposed. So you tweak the second option that I use, which is the sun intensity. Under lights, expand the options for the sunlight. We've got to reduce the intensity multiplier to balance things out. I usually go between these two and the interior lighting intensity to get a pretty good result. That's why the interactive render is really good here. Each model will react differently. So there's no accurate value you have to input in these settings to make it look right. It's all about testing and seeing if you like the result or not. Oh, and you can also play with the sky model to get different results. Sometimes the overcast can be really handy in some moody images. So by tweaking these settings, we're basically creating a flatter image without too many highlights or dark spots. And you might think, why don't you just go for a darker time with SketchUp's shadow tab? Well, because that way you're going to get those sunset or dawn long shadows with orangey skies, and that's not really the point. Sometimes you just need a plain day scene with less contrast. That's why this is such an important tip. So without having to go to all of those advanced settings, this is a simple and effective way to create a quick render with a diffuse light across the model. And since we're talking about shadow and sunlight, the fifth item is the sun multiplier. Such an important setting that no V-Ray user should be rendering without knowing about it. You know that by default, V-Ray renders a hard shadow, right? Usually it doesn't look that appealing and often make the image a little bit less realistic. Now, I'm not saying you can never live it hard like that. Sometimes you're just aiming for that result. I know, but I gotta be honest, I never live it at one. So the more you increase this number, the softer the shadow will be. A value around 5 to 10 usually gets pretty good results for eye level scenes that you're kind of close to your object. But for aerial shots or the ones that you're too far away, I would go for a value above 50. But again, each model and scene will react differently, so make sure to test it out and see for yourself. And to finish off, item number 6, take advantage of the V-Ray library. There are some basic materials that won't change, so stop wasting time on things that aren't going to affect the main subject of your composition. You know, right, I'm all about bringing your identity to your images. I like to have something in there that says, that's my style, or that it was an artistic choice. And those generic materials won't be what will stand out. 
so instead, use the library to cover most of the generic materials in your scene and spend that extra bit of time over one or two materials that will really stand out. The V-Ray library is located on the left arrow here under materials. You simply choose the one you want to use and drag it to your main material list. Alright, and actually if I could give you one more tip that is not really about SketchUp and V-Ray but kinda is would be that know where to draw the line between what should be done with rendering and what should be done in post. If you've been a follower of this channel for a while now, you know that I'd rather spend much more time during post and only extract fairly good renders from here. And that's because there are many things that can be done faster and even better in some ways in Photoshop than with your render engine. And I don't mean better in terms of realism, but more about making the final result unique and really giving your identity to the image. And for me, that's so much valuable, otherwise you're just one more render out there. Alright guys, that's it for this video. If you stayed till here, make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed. It helps a lot so that others can find this video as well. I know the frequency on this channel hasn't been so great, and that's because I'm working on something really big for you guys. Lots of new stuff coming up pretty soon, you're gonna see a major change here. Alright, cannot give that many details now, but the news will come out first in Instagram, so make sure to follow us there. Okay, thanks a lot for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!